interrupt you because we've got a few people with their hands up. I'll just quickly go to that uh, young lady down on the floor there. She had a hand up for a while. Thank go ahead. You. Uh, for the Attorney General, as you just alluded to, uh, there's Section 18D, which yeah. provides exceptions for legitimate political comment or legitimate artwork. Why do you think that 18C, as it currently stands, with those exceptions in 18D, isn't sufficient? Because Section 18C, as it's currently written, and you know, I, I understand the, the, the sentiment that the other panellists have expressed, but just realise what that m means. What it means is that we, are, that, that we are going to, if we don't repeal Section 18C in its current form, we are going to say in this country that political censorship is OK. Because that's the necessary consequence of the argument that is being made against me. And it's not the case that just because somebody says something outrageous or somebody says something that is offensive to community standards, that there should be a law against it that they should be able to be dragged off to court or prosecuted or fined or even thrown in jail because they say something that community standards... Well, hold on, it's that, civil, that is a, it's a, civil legislation, not from, criminal, so you won't end up in jail. from community it's standards. Not, George, I, did, it's, I didn't it's interrupt you, Chris. If I may... Well, if I, I may, interrupted you. If I may, <laughs> if I may finish, please. Because Bolt could, as a matter of fact, if Bolt had repeated what he said then he would have been in contempt of the federal well, let's, court. Let's not characterise it as a criminal offence when you know, attorney, that it is not. But, but, but you're missing the point, Chris. Well, I don't think we it, are. If Bolt, <laughs> if Bolt had not abided by the order that would, was made against him, he would have been in contempt of court. Okay, let's so hear, let's hear, well, let's hear from Marcia Langton, who uh, politely was waiting to get in. Well, um, <laughs> th this, uh, this Bolt case is being depicted now as if it were... Um, a matter of high politics. Uh, in my opinion, the, uh, the articles that, uh, that Bolt wrote about several Aboriginal people were far from uh, the subject of politics and, and simply abusive. Now, just to take one instance, uh, there was a young woman who was uh, the victim of his abuse and uh, uh, she is now uh, a world-renowned uh, immunologist, um, Dr Misty Jenkins. Now, she's very fair-skinned, like my children, um, and I've known her since she was a young science student at the University of Melbourne. Um, she later went on to do a PhD under Professor Peter Doherty. Then she went to Oxford and Cambridge, and she's worked hard all of her life. Um, and uh, she's a dedicated scientist, uh, has never particularly benefited from uh, her identity as an Aboriginal person. She, she has more than earned her way in life on the, uh, the merits of her work. And yet she was the victim of foul abuse from Bolt. And she, as a result of that case, withdrew from public life. She used to speak to students. Now, the nothing that he said about her was political. It was simply racial abuse. He, 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 he argued that she had no right to claim that she was Aboriginal and like most fools who, who put this argument in public, we are expected to deny our parents and our grandparents because somebody believes in race theories. So I well, absolutely I refute Bolton, I that this has to do with political debate and suppression of political debate. This is about preventing victims of abuse from being uh, racially abused. Now, he could say something about me that had nothing to do with my race and that would not offend 18C. He could say all sorts of terrible things about me and so long as they were not defamatory or, 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 or in breach of 18C, that would be legitimate debate and I w welcome him to do so. I'm, I'm perfectly capable of defending myself. But very often, people who are the victims of this kind of abuse are not capable of defending themselves. Let's yeah. uh, George Brandis, um, <laughs> if, I, if I understand you, if I understand you correctly, yeah. uh, you're not in any way defending what Andrew Bolt said. Is that correct? Did yeah. you find it offensive? Um, I didn't agree with it, um, but I would. I don't agree at all with what Professor Langton said a moment ago. I think An I, I know Andrew Bolt. Andrew Bolt is not a racist. And to accuse <laughs> Andrew Bolt is not a racist, and to accuse him of being a racist is itself a form of vile abuse of the man. He expressed an opinion. You ex he expressed an opinion 
which you and some people in this audience tonight found offensive. Fair enough. I think he has the same right to express opinions that other people find offensive, as you have the right to express opinions that he might find just, offensive. Just sorry, briefly, That's what a free society just, means. Just, if I could just get you to address uh, what Marcia Langton specifically said about mm -hmm. that uh, woman who's withdrawn from public life because of the depth of the offence that she took from those comments. Are you sympathetic with people who are so deeply offended they withdraw from public life? I, well, I don't know anything about the, the facts of, of, of that lady's particular case. But aren't, not... those, aren't those sort of facts at the heart of the case? Um, no, I don't think they are. At the heart of the case, is, in, to my way of thinking, is this question, Tony. In a free country, should people have the right to say things that other people find insulting or offensive or wounding? And I think they should. Do you think part of the reason why you can't sympathise or recognise... I didn't say I didn't sympathise. But, but, but you can't seem to understand how that would cause enormous discomfort for somebody and they would withdraw from public life. Do you think that's because you're a white, able-bodied, heterosexual no, male? No, I don't think... I don't think that... I don't think so at all. I don't think so at all. I, I think that that you, you, you have to be very careful what you wish for here, because... I think what people no, wish no, for it, is a civilised society. They do. They, of course they do. Of course they do. But how do we achieve a civilised society? Do we achieve a civilised society by having a civic culture in which those sort of offensive racist remarks or wrongful allegations of racism against other people, for that matter, are dis disapproved of by the society? Or do we have a society in which every time somebody says something unpopular or offensive to a majority of opinion, the parliament passes a law to say, well, you are prohibited, you are censored from saying that. Okay, I don't want a society I just like want to that. just go back to this side of the panel. And Sherry Markson, you were listening to this. You came out with a, a perhaps surprising um, personal view, which differs uh, from your newspaper's editorial line. Are you swayed at all listening to the Attorney General's arguments? Not at all, especially when he just said, um, when he used the words offensive. I mean, this isn't just people expressing unpopular and offensive statements. These are statements that would humiliate someone based on their race. It's very, very different. Well, it, it all depends what the test is. Now, you know, Section 18C defines four different tests. Offend, insult, humiliate, intimidate. Do you really think that we can have a free exchange of ideas in this country if people don't have the right to say things that might offend or insult or even humiliate their antagonists but, in an argument? But all of that can add up to vilification. And as, and this well, no, is I don't only... agree. Uh, that, that's, that's, in a sense, the very point. I don't think that is vilification. It may be, Why but not? I think vilification... This is I the think only law that deals with I racial vilification. vilification is better defined in other terms. And you ha we haven't addressed the other side of this argument, Tony, and that is that, as I said at the start, we can have free speech and we can have proper laws against racial vilification. What I'm concerned to defend is freedom of opinion. If somebody, for example, uh, incites racial violence, that's not the expression of opinion. And nobody's suggesting we would do away with laws like that. So I would just say there is a law for inciting racial violence, right. but 18C and 18D are the only laws that deal with racial vilification, and that's why it is so important. Well, that that's not remain. right, actually. There are, there are state laws. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I, I'm sorry to... Uh, we could probably argue this all night, but we do have other issues to get on to. So we may come back to this during the course of the program, but it is time to move along. You're watching Q&A. The next question comes...